In this video I'd like to show you how to get the dimensions of a bounding box as part attributes using a reusable feature. Later on you can use these logistics informations on the drawing or for further processes in your PLM system. So first of all we need a solid. That means I insert a design feature, a block for example, and I place the block onto the origin of the absolute coordinate system. So this is necessary um, that we have a so-called um, dummy solid because later on when we add the reusable feature we have to select a new parent and therefore we can exchange this dummy solid with a new parent. So in the next step we need a bounding body and this is what we can do using the feature called bounding body. And here I have to select the solid, I use the type block, I select the solid and we directly see the um, result, we see the dimensions of the solid body and confirm with OK. So for a better overview, I hide the block and now we see the bounding body and I change the filter to solid body and I select the box with the right mouse button and I browse to properties. So now we have to do two things inside of the properties. The first thing is we have to rename the solid. So this is necessary and needed because later on we um, have to make a reference to our object and therefore the object needs a name. So the second thing is we have to add attributes. We have to add the dimensions of the bounding body as a solid attribute. So therefore I create a new attribute, I need a title and I make a reference, therefore I use expression formula and using the um, black arrow here on the side we can make a reference to the feature parameters. So I have to add um, to select the feature and now we see the result. We have an access to the length, width and the height of the, uh, of the bounding body. So that means here we have the dimensions. Confirm with OK. And then we can add the new attribute. And the result is we have the title, the X, and we have the value of the length. And this is what we have to do with all the other dimensions, with the Y dimension, a reference to feature parameters, select the feature and the width and edit. And at last we have the set, expression formula. And so we can add the height. So this is the result. So we have renamed the solid and we have the attribute here as solid attributes inside of the properties. So the next step is to implement some knowledge fusion functions in the expressions editor. So I go to tools and expressions or control E. I add a new group uh, for a better overview that we have a kind of a structure and I make this group active. So now what we have to type in here in the formula and in the name, I give you a detailed information for this. So this is the initial situation. So we are in the expression editor and we have to create a new expression. Therefore we have to add a new name and we have to add if then else condition in the formula array. 
So the important thing here is that we have two knowledge fusion functions. The first function is an ask function and we have a set function. So this condition means if there is a value of an attribute called x which refers to an object called box then this is set as a part attribute. So you can copy this if then else condition out of the video description and then you can reuse it. In detail. So here we have the ask function and you see we have this input area. On the first position you see that there is nothing between the exclamation mark which means we refer to the current work part. On the second position um, we refer to, the, to an object called box and this is the reason why we renamed the solid that we can make a reference to it. And on the third position we ask for a value of an attribute called x. And this is what we get out of the solid body properties. And in the next step we have to set the value as a part attribute. Therefore we need this um, function, it is the set function and this should be the result that we have um, the values of the bounding box as a part attribute. And this is what we get out of the ask function and out of the solid body properties. So when we add the reusable feature to a new part and then when we select a new parent, a new solid, then we have one problem because the value is empty. So that means we have a data type of no value. Because in the next step we have to update the value using the update for external changes. And to prevent this error we need a solution for it. We need an error handler which looks like that. Um, so in this if statement we look for a data type called number and if this one is true then the value can set as a part attribute. So back to NX. As you can see I have created new expression one expression for each dimension with the corresponding if then else condition. So to ensure that the implemented functions have an impact when we add a reusable object we have to link the expressions as feature attributes. So therefore I right click on the bounding body feature and I click to properties and here again I create a new attribute value for the title is x. I change to expression formula and I make a reference to the formula and content is here double click to x temp and OK. Add it as a new attribute and then we have to add the y dimension, the same procedure, double click on the y temp, OK, add it and last the set one. And double click and confirm with OK. So, and now we are ready to define the reusable feature. So therefore we find in tools, in the group reusable library, the mod tab, there is the define reusable object. So the important thing here is that we change the type to feature. And now I have to select the solid, this is the bounding body, and I select the folder and I change the descriptive name to box for example and last we have to define a preview 
and then we can confirm with OK. So now I change to this example part and I browse to the reusable library and now we see we have the reusable feature here inside and now we can check if everything works. So I drag it and I drop it in the graphical window and now I have to select uh, the new parent, it is this solid, and confirm with OK. And now we see the bounding body on the one side and when we look to the attributes, so there's nothing inside because we have to make an update and therefore we use the update for external change. And now you see that now we have the three dimensions of the bounding body as a part attribute. Here again, we have the X, Y and Z dimension. So, but if you realize that we have a wrong alignment, so this is here the situation, um, when we see that we have the x, y and z value, so we see that the z value is the wrong one. This is also what we can see when we um, edit the parameters. And now you see that the alignment of the bounding box is wrong. So here what you have to do is tick off create non-aligned minimum body and then you can select the coordinate system here for the alignment, for example the set and set direction should be this one and now we have the right alignment, we have the right orientation of the bounding body. And last we have to look again to the attributes, we have to make an update and everything is correct. And again here we have the dimensions as the part attributes.